Eventually, later, uh, it was uh, perhaps in 1929 uh, that this book, A Room of One's Own, was published. Now, once being published, this book received great reviews. Now, only if you talk about the legacy of A Room of One's Own, it has become, uh, you know, a manifesto of feminism, a manifesto of feminist writers. And uh, after 1929, this particular book has been read widely throughout, particularly by females, and has been part of the academia in the contemporary times. This work is being taught in the universities, in colleges, uh, is, is made an important part, an integral part of the curriculum throughout. People even today study it as one of the most influential feminist work. And there are some who would compare it with uh, the works written by uh, Wollaston Craft, like Vindication of Rights of Women, and even some go to the extent of comparing this particular uh, book to uh, uh, J.S. Mill's book, Subjection of Women. So that is the legacy of this particular book. As I said earlier, in Divering Second Wave Feminism, this book became a pamphlet of that particular moment. This book became a manifesto of that particular moment. And it has continued to inspire movements after movements, uh, decade after decade, even today females are inspired by this particular work. Though the subject matter of this work was not great, but considering the times in which it was written, considering the background in which it was written, the theme of this work and the structure of this work was great and was highly appreciated. Now in the next section of this lecture, we will deal with how this uh, book was received in public or what kind of reviews this book received. One of the queer or strange thing that happened with this particular book was that it was not reviewed by the friends of Virginia Woolf. By the friends, I mean, you know, uh, E.M. Foster, Lytton Strachey and others, you know, they did not review this book. And through the diary or letters of Virginia Woolf, we find that Virginia Woolf was not offended uh, uh, by this that her own friends did not review this book because she writes at one place that since uh, E.M. Foster and uh, Lytton Strachey are not reviewing this book it makes me glad because now perhaps I will not face the harsh uh, you know criticism from the public I will not receive you know very harsh reviews she thought perhaps you know uh, these uh, people like E.M. Foster and others would also you know uh, not give good reviews about the book. So she was somehow happy with them not reviewing the book. But this book was, uh, since it was published in England, it was also published in America. So in both the places, uh, this book, A Room of One's Own, received good reviews. So I have selected few reviews from some important, uh, you know, organizations or uh, presses which, you know, reviewed uh, great works of literature. And let's see what they have to say. The Times Literary Supplement referred to this delightfully peripatetic essay that glances in a separated and good-tempered way over conflicts old and new. That was the review of the Times Literary Supplement and the review of Times Literary Supplement was positive, was in favor of Virginia Woolf's A Room of One's Arm. Arnold Bennett, uh, Against whom Virginia Woolf perhaps wrote this particular essay or you know who uh, ignited the fire of writing a paper on feminism in Virginia Woolf didn't give a good review of uh, Virginia Woolf's uh, book A Room of One's Own. He said about this book in his review, you know she can write he said but her grammar is not good. And he also disputed her thesis when he said, it is necessary to have 500 a year and a room with a lock on the door if you are to write a fiction or property. Now this particular review, uh, our statement, our argument, our thesis were, was in opposition to the general thesis of the book A Room of One's Own that if a female needs to write, she needs five gunas and you know, a room of uh, five cents or a room of her own to write. So in, 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 you know, in opposition to that, Arnold Bennett would say, no, she needs 500 and she also needs a lock to, uh, you know, uh, lock her door, uh, the door of her room in order to write the uh, novel or in order to write fiction. He further said, she talks about everything but the thesis. If her mind was not what it is, I should accuse her of wholesale padding. She is 
uh, not consciously guilty of padding. She is merely the victim of her extraordinary gift of fancy, not imagination. So that was the review of you know uh, Arnold Bennett, which was not favorable at all. And we understand why Arnold Bennett would not give a good review to a, a Virginia Woolf's A Room of One's Own. The Observer, Observer, which is another important uh, press, uh, another important uh, press house. Uh, one of the reviewers from Observer, J.C. Squires, wrote, uh, A room of one's own as full of incidental wisdom, written with great grace and an unobtrusive imagery, and its prime merit is its utterly candid statement of an intellectual woman's point of view. View. He further said that it is like a breath of a fresh air simply because she has discovered precisely what she thinks, says it frankly, wittily and charmingly and has no axe to grind but the general cause of a fuller life for women who want it. That was J.C. Squire from The Observer and he also gave a very positive review about a room of one's own. He was in full support of this particular uh, work or this particular non-fiction work which would you know help a great which would be of a great help for the females and would help the cause of women to you know uh, uh, to uh, come in front or to be part of the literary circle. Another reviewer Louis uh, Cornenberger from the New York Times considered that in spite of a theme that is pretty self-evident and conclusions that are not always definitive, this book, the distillation of the crystalline mind so gaily and freshly and yet forcefully written, says something. Which means the point of view that Virginia Woolf made in this book did mean something or made sense. It was not, you know, uh, like outwardly rejected uh, as Arnold Bennett did by New York Times also. So New York Times also gave a very good review of the book A Room of One's Own. Lastly, we have included a review from The Spectator about A Room of One's Own and it said that future historian will place Mrs. Wolfe's little book beside besides Mary Wollstonecraft's The Rights of Woman and John Stuart Mill's The Subjection of Woman. So that was the last review that we uh, selected from numerous reviews of A Room of One's Own and even in this review we will find that uh, Virginia Woolf's work A Room of One's Own was not well received during her own times when it was published but it continues to be well received even today. Generations after generations have read A Room of One's Own and A Room of One's Own have inspired women to write have inspired women to make a space for themselves to express their intellectual side. For sure, females do not lack intellectual ability. They do have this, but what is needed is space and proper time to polish it up. That uh, was today's lecture at your academy. We dealt with the introduction to Virginia Woolf's work, A Room of One's Own. We would deal with, in the coming lectures, uh, with the content of this particular book, A Room of One's Own, and we'll discuss in detail what Virginia Woolf talked about in this particular book, A Room of One's Own. But uh, for now, that is all we have at your academy for you. I hope this lecture was helpful for you and you had uh, good enough information about what went behind the scenes during and before the publication of the book, A Room of One's Own. Don't forget to share, like, comment and subscribe your academy. For more interesting stuff, keep watching your academy.